Martin Luther Christ, we're out to teach you so-called blacks, Spanish, and Native Americans who you are according to the Bible. Because for so long we've been out here thinking that we're supposed to follow the ways that we have learned in this, this place called America today. But the Most High God has given you other, other laws and statutes to, to keep you holy and separate away from these other nations. Matter of fact, give me uh, Matthew 5 real quick in verse 27. Because we explained to you that a woman is to dress modestly. Why did the Most High God say a woman should dress modestly? Modestly means that you are not revealing yourself. Why? Because you can cause another man to sin. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Come on. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What was it said in the old times that thou shalt not commit adultery? When we came out of the land of Egypt, the Most High God gave uh, Moses law, statutes, and commandments to teach us. One of those commandments was, thou shalt not commit adultery. So Christ is telling you what? I ain't did away with what was said before. Bring it on. Read. But I say unto you, come on, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. Guess what? Read, no, read that part again. I'm sorry, go ahead. Read. But I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever looks on a woman uh -huh. to lust Come after her, Come on. hath commit adultery with her already in his heart. So guess what? A woman will say, well, he shouldn't be looking at me. Well, guess what? You shouldn't be showing off yourself for this man to look at. Yes, yes. You should be covering up yourself so that this man don't see all of your curves and shapes and be thinking, dang, well, I can't wait to get down with that. That's right. But where have you learned these things? You learned it right here today in this place where we call America today. Right. It's all over your TV. It's all over the movies, the, the internet, everywhere you look. But give me that in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, I believe. Come out from, uh, and be ye separate. 6 and 9, I believe. The Most High God tells you don't learn the ways of the heathen. Why? Because the ways of the heathen is going to oppress you. It's going to keep you oppressed. It's going to keep you in a dead state thinking that you're a black. You're a, a Hispanic. You're an African American. You're Native American. But the Most High God said you are Israelite. You're the children of Israel. The greatest people ever walked this planet Earth. Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them. The Most High God is speaking to you so-called black Spanish and Native American. He's talking to you, uh, so-called black man walking in the seafood place. He said, come out from among them. Read. And be ye separate. And be ye separate. Why is he telling you to be separate? Give me Leviticus. Hold that. Give me Leviticus 26 and 20. Why is he telling you to be separate? Because, 2026, 20, I'm sorry. You have been made to be separate from the beginning. The Most High God created other nations. But he chose you and separated you and made you special. That's right, you too, so-called Hispanic man. Read. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. Come on. And ye shall be holy unto me. The Most High God said, you shall be holy unto me. Who is he talking to? He talked to the children of Israel. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. That's right. For I, for, for I, the Lord, am holy. The Lord, your God, the one that created the heavens and the earth, he is your God and your God only. He said he is holy. Read. And, and have served you from other people. Read that again. And have severed you from other people. He severed you from other people. What does that mean? He separated you from the other nations. What did he do when he separated you? He separated you and said that you will be above the other nations. Right. But why are we not separated and put above them right now? Bring it out. Go back to where you was at. I'm going to tell you why we ain't above and why we ain't where we're supposed to be. Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them. Why? Because we won't come out from among the, the doctrines that we've been taught. We won't come from our Christianity. Oh, we love white Jesus. We love Allah. We love every dang on thing but the God that created us. Read. And be ye separate. We don't want to be separate. We want to be combined. We want to be, what's the word? Um, assimilated. Read. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. Guess what, women? You wearing pants is an un unclean thing under God. That's right. He said, who can make an unclean thing clean? 
Ain't no such thing as women's pants. They was made for men. That's right. Guess what, black man? It's the same thing for you too. Hispanic man, Native American man. What? Ain't no such thing as a man's skirt. It sounds stupid. What? Is something else on that? Yeah. Read. And I will receive you. If you come out from them, that's when the Most High God will receive you. But what we want to do, we say, nah, nah, nah. Mr. White Man gave me food stamps. He gave me all of these things. Uh, no, no, no. Mr. R.B., he give me uh, a discount every time I come in his store. I can get, I can get cigarettes on credit. What? Right. Give me Lamentations 4 and 17. We love our oppressors. Hey, let me ask you a question. If a person was to uh, steal from you, then they whoop you, you still gonna love them? I bet you would, because that's what our people do today. But these people hate your stinking guts. Read. Lamentations chapter four and verse 17. Read. As for us. As for us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read. Our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. Where's our vain help? Because we trust in the other nations. We trust in the other nations. We go to them because the Most High God said that we would have to. Hey, sis, let me ask you a question over there with the baby getting in the car. Hey, what's your nationality? Are you a so-called black person? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question then. If a person was to take your baby from you and bash their head against the stone, are you still going to love them for that? No. So let me ask you this. Is that your natural hair? No? Is that? Okay. So, the Most High God, He made your hair what? What does it look like naturally? It's woolly? Yeah? Guess what? The Most High God has had woolly hair. He made you to have the same type of texture hair that He has. That's right! So why? Would you go and get some hair that looks like your own process? Bring it out. That don't make no sense. Yeah. Come on over here so we can talk a little better. Read that again. Lamentation chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. Our eyes has failed for our vain help. We look to the other nations to teach us about who we are. We look to the other nations to teach us about our God. They tell us that our God looks like a so-called white man with stringy hair. What? When the Bible tells us that he has woolly hair. When the Bible says that Christ is the express image of the Most High God, and yes, he looks exactly like him, then it tells you that Christ has, has skin the color of brass, burned in the fire. That's right. So if Christ was a dark-skinned man, and he looked just like his father, who must our God look like? Read that again. Lamentation chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. As for us, uh -huh. our eyes have as yet failed for our vain help. We still look to the other nations to help us. Why? Because they give us food stamps. They give us Section 8 housing. When the Most High God said that I gave you the whole earth. Read up. But because you don't want to keep my commandments, you're going to serve the other nations. So my question to you. Do you want to live like a slave for the rest of your life, or do you want to be in rulership? That's right. Forever! That's right. There's only one way to do that. Right. Come back and keep God's commandments. That's right! Keep reading. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. That's why we go out and we go and ask for assistance from the other nations to help us. We don't even help our own people. Right. Why? Because we have been taught to hate our people. You know why? Because our parents are descendants of slaves that has been destroyed mentally. So what they did, they passed down what they've been taught. What? They was taught a white Jesus, so you was taught a white Jesus. Right. They was taught to love your enemy means to love the same people that took you on cargo slave ships, beat the crap out of you, told you they hate you, told you they don't give a darn about you nor your family, but yet we still love them. We still want to be friends with them. Matter of fact, 
They put it in the book. I'm going to read it for you and I'm going to show you some scriptures that go along with why you should not love that person. Why you should love your God, the one that created you, to be above all nations. That's right. I want you to read this. Read that. Start right there. This is our open things. The William Hintz letter, uh -huh. the making of a slave. This is a man that showed other nations, well, other the other nations, how to keep you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans loving them and loving your oppression. Read. This is our open letter of thanks. They said, thank you. This is their open letter of thanks to all the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. We will always be in your debt Come on. to you for your labor. They said they will always be in debt to you for your labors. Why? Is it because they didn't pay you? No. They're being sarcastic. Read. You built this nation. Because you built this nation. Our people built this nation. This nation was given to the so-called Hispanics and the Native Americans. This was our land. But what happened? They came and took it violently. Read. And were responsible for the great wealth we still enjoy today. You know why you was responsible for the great wealth they still enjoy today? Because they ain't pay you for your slave labor. They gave you a half a cup of water, told you keep on pushing. Ain't that right? Read. Upon your backs, laden with scrapes, we sometimes had to apply disciplinary re reasons you carry our nation. So guess what some of them disciplinary reasons were? That was you getting a, tied to a tree and your back beaten to the back to the point that your skin was ripped away. That was your wife being taken from you, your pregnant wife taken from you, and her belly cut open and her baby falling out. You know? That was your disciplinary action for not willingly being a slave. Read, go to Habakkuk 2 and 12. Because guess what? The Most High God is a just God. That's right. So for everything that they've done to you, they're going to pay for it. That's right. They took you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and they whooped you, and they beat you, but they're going to pay for it. That's right. Read Habakkuk 2 and 12. Habakkuk. Chapter 2 and verse 12. Come on. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. What? Read that again. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Destruction to the other nations that built this town off the backs of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is God's words, not mine. Read. Establish it a city by iniquity. He established Columbia, South Carolina off iniquity. Off of the sins that he keep you in by what? Buying on the Sabbath day? That's their biggest, biggest money day. They pay you on Friday and go have you put all the big sales on Saturday so you can defile the Most High God's Sabbath day. You know? They sell pants to the women. They sell uh, weaves to the women. They do all this stuff to get you to stay hating yourself and your people. Keep reading. Verse 13. I'm sorry, that's the end of that one. Go back to the book. Pick up where you left off. So the Most High God said, yeah, okay, they did this to you, but I'm going to pay them back for what they did. So woe to them that built America off the backs, the blood, sweat, and tears of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Oh, right. We thank you for your diligence. They and said, we thank you for your diligence and your tenacity. We diligently... Go back to them. Soon as we get paid, what we do? Go right to the store and give it right back to them. We diligently, after being let loose, supposedly, from slavery, we went right back to them. We ain't know nothing else to do. Keep reading. Even when we refuse to allow you to even walk in our shadows. Dang. We still diligently work for them when they refuse to walk, let us walk in their shadows. How did that happen? They said whites only, no blacks allowed. Let's build up a wall to keep the Hispanics out. We 
but yet we still try to follow a white Jesus. We still try to say we African. We still want to follow an Arab custom of Islam. Simple people, read. You follow close behind believing that someday we would accept you and treat you like a man, like, like men and women. Guess what? Still to this day, they don't treat you like men and women. Right. They cut a man beard off and call him a boy. That ain't no man. They treat a dog with more rights than the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. That's right. Going right back to the scripture that I read before. That's Lamentations 417. We still trust in a nation that cannot save us. Don't go there yet. Keep reading. We publicly acknowledge black people for raising our children. Jump down to right here. Even during the time when, when we found pleasure in your women. Even, even when they found pleasure in our women, we still would go back to helping them and doing what we want. How did that happen? Guess what? That was a curse put upon our people for not keeping God's commandments. Get that real quick, Deuteronomy 28 and 30. Because we didn't want to serve the Most High God, he said, you're going to serve the enemies. You know? He said, if you don't keep my commandments, certain curses are going to come upon you. Let's find out these curses. Hey, bro, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality, bro? Come here real quick. What's your name, bro? What's your name? What's your name? Say it again. I, I can barely hear you, man. Come a little closer. You say your name, David. All right, I'm Elisha. We out here teaching our people who they are according to the Bible, right? What did you say your nationality is? Not sure. That's a great answer. That's fine. Most High God said we wasn't gonna know, right? But then He said He left a remnant to help us. And, and be able to understand who we are today. He left signs and wonders, right? I want you to look at the flyer. On the front of that flyer, it says truth about slavery, right? You know a little bit about slavery? Come a little bit closer, man. What you know about slavery? What happened in slavery? Yeah. People get killed for learning education. All that. Did you, do you descend from those same people? I wouldn't know, I couldn't even tell you. Alright, okay. So remember, I asked you your nationality, you said you didn't know, right? And I told you the most high God said that that was gonna happen, but he said he was gonna leave signs to show us who we are. Okay? So you said stuff like this happened in slavery. You remember stuff like this being being happened, right? People being sold on ox black, sold for guns and stuff, right? You ever heard of the sub Saharan slave trade? You heard of that? This transatlantic slave trade? You seen stuff like this before? Seen stuff like this before? Yeah, women getting sold. Yeah, kids, women getting like sold, their children getting taken from. Guess who that happened to? Us. It did, happen to us. I'm gonna show you something real quick. All right, give me a uh, Deuteronomy. Give me 28, verse 45. Deuteronomy, Read. Read. Watch chapter that. 28 and verse 45. Come on. Read. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee uh -huh. and overtake thee. So this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. When you read one and one, he said these are the words he spoke unto all Israel. This is what happened when they brought, you ever heard of the, the exodus from Egypt? About them coming out of Egypt, out of bondage in Egypt? Okay, so this is in the wilderness, he's speaking to them, right? He said, moreover, all these curses is gonna come upon you. Is curses a good thing or an evil thing? It's evil, right? Hold that real quick, give me Daniel 9. I believe it's verse 11. So you say, you agree that curses is an evil thing. So you would say that uh, taking your child from you and then selling them into captivity, would you say that's an evil thing? That's an evil thing. If you was betrothed to a, a woman or you was married to a woman and somebody take your woman from them, sleep with her, and then give them back to you, is that an evil thing? So if you fell in love with a woman and they snatched her out of your hands to sleep with her, that's not gonna bother you? That's not gonna bother you. You gotta be a man first. You gotta be a man first. You gotta be a man before you 
that you got a little self before you put yourself in a woman or anything else. Yeah, I learned. Okay, I, I understand. You got to love yourself, right? Because how you going to love somebody if you don't love yourself, right? Exactly. Okay, all right. What if it was your daughter? That's different. That's different? But that's a part of me. That's what I mean. That's so, I somebody love. take your daughter from you and molest her and then give her back to you. You going to feel some type of way about it? That's an evil thing, would you say? Okay, I'll pray. Read this. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Come on. Yay, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So, this is Daniel, the prophet Daniel. You heard about Daniel in the line there? All right, this is prophet Daniel speaking. He said, all Israel have transgressed God. Meaning what? They sin. Okay, read. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. That's how we do. And Moses told us, if you obey the voice of the Lord thy God, that he will put blessings upon us. But if we didn't, curses would come upon us, right? Remember, you said curses is an evil thing, right? Read this. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. So, Daniel was saying actually the same thing Moses said. He's actually confirming what Moses said. He said, because we didn't keep God's commandment, the curse came upon us. Read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. That oath was us saying, all that you say, we will do when we came out. You read in Exodus 19 and 5, I believe. We said, yeah, all you say, we'll do. That's the oath we made with the Most High God. We was going to keep your commandments. And, but he said, if you didn't, curses will not come upon you. Read. Because we have sinned against him. Because we have sinned against him, curses came upon us. Read. And... And, and he had confirmed his words because he said it shall come to pass so that means if we didn't do it it wasn't no if ands buts about it so he confirmed it by actually it actually happened okay read which he spake against us come on and against our judges and just us keep going by bringing us by bringing us a great evil a what a great evil like you said before Curses is a great evil. So he said he allowed this great evil to come upon us. Keep going. For under the whole heaven. Under the whole heavens. This guy's here. Under all of the earth. I mean, under all of the heavens. What happened? Have not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. So what he's saying is the curses and all the great evil that came upon the people of Israel. The people whose homeland is Jerusalem. It happened to nobody else. Okay? You with me? Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. Come on. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. So the curses came upon the children of Israel. Daniel said that's true, right? And he said what happened to the children of Israel ain't happened to nobody else, right? Read. And pursue thee and uh -huh. overtake thee. So if something is overtaking you, can you stop it? No, you can't. Right? Read. To thou be destroyed. Till we have been destroyed mentally to the fact that we don't know who we are. To the fact that we think our God looks like this. To the point that we think it's okay to sleep with whoever the hell we want to. Right. To the point that we think we can work any day of the week. We can buy and cook and sell on any day of the week. That we can shoot our own brother down and it'd it be no consequences. That's how we have come. That's how we've been destroyed. Read because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And all of that happened because we didn't keep God's commandments. Read. To keep his commandments. Come on. And his statutes which he commanded thee. Keep going. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and those for curses, a wonder. Those curses is going to be upon you. It's going to pursue you. It's going to be on you and your seed for a what? For a sign and for a wonder. Hey, if I'm looking for Clifton Seafood, how do I find it? Can you point it out to me, please? Where's Clifton Seafood? Where is it? How you know that's Clifton Seafood? You gotta look. Huh? You gotta look. I gotta look, and what do I see? Clifton Seafood. On a what? Sunday. Huh? Sunday? No. What do I see to know that that's Clifton Seafood? What is that called? A sign. So he said these curses was going to be on us for a sign. And a wonder. What's the wonder? We wonder who the heck we are. 
Daniel said what happened to the children of Israel ain't happened to nobody else under the heavens. Right. That's right. So he said our people was in slavery. Our people, children was taken from us and we, they were sold into captivity, right? Give me verse 41. Bring it on. Verse 41. Come on. Thou shalt be got sons and daughters. We will get sons and daughters. We will have children. Read. But thou shalt not enjoy them. Why can't we enjoy having spending time with our children? Read. For they shall go into captivity. They went into captivity. I asked you earlier. I said if your children was taken from you and sold into captivity, you said that's an evil thing. You wouldn't like that, right? Guess what? That happened to our people, didn't it? Then you said it happened to who? Who is the them? The children of who? Of Israel. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of the day. Nobody else has went through the things that we went through. That's just one thing that shows, right? So you might say, okay, where's other people whose children went into captivity? Has everybody been packed up on slave ships? Did this happen to everybody? I'm sorry, here we go. That happened to everybody? That only happened to us, right? Let's see if it happened to the children of Israel. Real quick, give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. So he said you're going to go back into Egypt again with ships. What's Egypt? What were, what were the children of Israel in Egypt? They were slaves. So when you read Exodus 20 and 2, he said Egypt is synonymous. I'm good with this. Go ahead. You put it back. He said it's synonymous with bondage. So he said, I'm going to bring it back into bondage by way of ship. He's talking to the children of Israel. But who did that happen to? It happened to us. So if that happened to the children of Israel, but when we look in history and we see that happen to us, and Daniel said it only happened to the children of Israel, who must we be? You doggone right, we the children of Israel. Yeah, the greatest people ever walked the planet Earth. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.